Little lumps everywhere? Wait, what is this? Put the static ass and he's a drunk. Now tell the truth on that. Hey, come see me. For real? you! Everybody wanna know yes, I did kill her! The shocking courtroom clips you just witnessed document the unhinged behavior of Michelle Blair. Take note of her insane outbursts House as you're about horse. to see a different side of her in stark contrast to this public persona that she never wanted to reveal to the public. <laughs> what happened? The following interrogation footage has never been seen before. Michelle Angela Blair, a 35-year-old mother of four, appeared to be a dedicated and loving mother to the outside world. But a twist Where's of fate her revealed that pick? not only was that a lie, but that she was also hiding an unimaginably disturbing secret in plain sight within her apartment. Michelle's lies came crashing down around her when she failed to pay rent for her east side Detroit apartment. She was eventually served a court-ordered eviction notice. On March 24th, 2015, a crew arrived at her apartment to oh carry God. out the eviction, only to find out that Chat Michelle saying wasn't this one's there. Bad. So they began moving her things out, including all of her furniture. In the living room, where the family spent much of their time together, the moving crew found a large white freezer. When the freezer was open to the mover's horror, all of Michelle's darkest secrets were exposed. What's in because there? Because of this disturbing discovery, they immediately called the police. Michelle was eventually found at a neighbor's apartment where she was hiding with two of her children, but the other two, nine-year-old Stephen and 13-year-old Stoney, were nowhere to be seen. Michelle was arrested and brought in for questioning, where she shared the horrific story in graphic detail. As she was being led away by police, Michelle said to them, I just want you to know I'm not evil. It was just an evil act. The following footage has been analyzed by what? a qualified team, including a licensed attorney and former criminal prosecutor, a licensed clinical psychologist, and a former licensed professional counselor. It's important to note that the police department made some redactions to the following footage, but we added context throughout for your viewing. In order to protect the identity of the alleged victim, we will be referring to him as Michelle's youngest son and by the pseudonym Alex throughout this case. Okay. Uh, water or pop or something? Um, no, you guys have any uh, Vaseline? Just one of those. I got no Vaseline. Just right. water, man. Just water? Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, is any of my aunt being here? Hmm. She was an ex-police officer. I just want her to hear it from me. Is that sure. We're talking to her. That's, that's okay. Just have a seat, okay? We'll be right with you in a second. An officer uncuffs Michelle and offers her water. Both are gestures of goodwill. These gestures are meant to keep her from shutting down and keep her comfortable to get her talking. Michelle wears her hood pulled up, perhaps to hide from the situation and feel less exposed. Oh, the room no. is intentionally stark with nothing but a table and chairs. Michelle is very soft-spoken and cooperative. It's noteworthy that she was concerned about giving a message to her auntie. Michelle seems concerned to ensure that her auntie heard from her first. Michelle is left alone in the room for about 20 minutes. She scooted her chair back and moved herself further from the table, suggesting she's trying to distance herself from the interrogation before it's even started. While she waits, her hands touch her stomach, signaling that she may be feeling anxious and is seeking comfort, which is understandable for someone sitting in an interrogation room. She sits extremely still for several minutes, which may indicate that she's very focused and possibly preparing what she's going to say. Yep. Although some dismiss body language analysis as pseudoscience, it's used by the FBI and CIA during interrogations. When the CIA is interrogating an individual, they look for clusters of three or more indicators that occur in either quick succession or all at once. These indicators can be signs of discomfort or uncertainty in what the individual is stating, rather than indicators of deception. It's extremely important to note that you cannot detect deception through body language analysis alone. Uh, I love you. This is the second time she's whispered, I love you, Alex, which is the name of her youngest son. Oh, she my. She may be feeling worried about when or if she's going to see him again. Oh, oh God. I'm scared. Get your bingo cards oh, ready. Yeah. What the? <clears throat> You doing okay? Got some water? Yeah. Okay. All right. Today? I'm okay. I'm okay. She's going to pop off. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. You don't mind, okay? Uh, can I ask you one? Sure. Right. I love the true crime interviews. I know it's been a while um, since you know we've what? seen I an interview. Right now. But, but I, I can find out. As soon as we're done, I'll make sure you know all that information, okay? I just really wanted to tell my eyes. A little loud. Her face. Because I created a big distance between her, and she honestly never did anything to love us. And I created that distance for her so I could hide it. 
You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she thinks that I'm mad at her and don't love her. I'm, I'm gonna make sure you. It's on the Reddit. Like, there's a like, there's a true crime no, Reddit. Because she loves me so much. Bingo card that uh, yeah. someone someone in the community I'm made. Her and I remember her face. It's on the the Valkyrie yeah. Reddit page. We, I gotta take care of this first, okay? And then you can tell me anything you want. Guys are on I got some um administrative things that I gotta let you know about, like your constitutional rights. The officer stops her. She needs to Mirandize her before she implicates herself. And without hearing her Miranda rights, any statement she makes may be inadmissible. The officer has Michelle read the Miranda warning out loud to show that she's literate. It's imperative that the officers make it clear that the suspect is Mirandized properly, which means they were both informed of and understood their rights before agreeing to waive them. Despite the police never making it mm. seem this way, you're waiving serious constitutional rights, and the courts take this very seriously. I have so the right to remain properly. silent. Did you, uh, did you graduate high school? Yeah. Up to what grade of school do you have? Uh, what was I doing? Hiding. The officer is professional, but not particularly friendly. She's a little gruff and serious, but that appears to just be her personality oh. and not intentionally related to the interrogation. The station likely sent a female officer to speak to Michelle, as they may have felt that she'd be more open when speaking to another female. Um, do you know if my kids' names were released on the news? Mitchell is a, yeah, a I, I pretty unique name. I've never yeah, heard of it. It's like Mitchell and Michelle. It I gave them the but number and everything. To who? To her dad. Mitchell. To dad, you know. Okay, I'm just going to ask you some, uh, some quick um, questions. Just about, um, about you, basically. What's your first name? Mitchell. M-I-T. So, M-I-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-E. -E. The officer is getting background information to try to get her used to talking. Once a suspect begins mm -hmm. talking, it's harder for them to stop. It's mm -hmm. always important to begin with questions that they will be more open to answering Relatable. instead of jumping right into the facts of the crime. This also helps to build rapport. The officer likely has most of this information already, but wants to get more specific details and also wants to get a sense of how candid Michelle may be. She may also be trying to ascertain her competency regarding criminal responsibility due to the nature of the crimes and the possibility that Michelle has mental illness. What color is your hair? Can you put your hoodie down? I have any hair. Okay. Dark brown. Okay. Just brown. Bring your hoodie down. Yeah, just leave it off. Yeah. Are you cold or something? No, it's just, look at my hair. You feel oh, like you didn't have my head. Oh, you God. Know? So you say, okay. I'm just so used to being. You have any body scars? Car tattoos. What's on your chest? Trust no one. What's it say? Trust no one. What's on your back? Something Trust no one. Like what? Is it wording or a picture? Wording. What's it say? I have to tell you. Yeah. I have to show you. It's yeah. ridiculous. Okay. I mean, what is it? You. I got this covered up. Stephen Barry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right here. What's that one? Just the kids' names. Oh, just, God. Uh, that's really dad's name, but I just cross it out. Okay. Asking general questions that are easy to answer may help put Michelle at ease before the actual questions relating to why she's here begins. It will also help the interrogator establish Michelle's baseline and observe her behavior when she knows her answers are truthful. This will help her dissect Michelle's responses and body language later and gauge if she is being honest. The officer asks her about her tattoos. What someone permanently inks on their body can be very telling about who the person is. Michelle has trust no one tattooed on her chest. This provides a lot of insight into her mindset. I typically don't like <laughs> to make any definitive conclusions about tattoos because people choose words or phrases for different reasons. But it seems that this type of phrase might be significant. It could indicate that Michelle has had a tough past with a limited support system. Or she's been betrayed by people close to her that she should have been yeah, able to trust. Probably. Michelle is embarrassed about the tattoo on her back, but still shows it to the officer, which proves she has a respect for authority and will likely continue to be cooperative. Do you have any amputations? No. You use any narcotics? No, you mean. No like regrets. Drugs? No. Uh, like drugs, illegal drugs? No. I've smoked weed before. I have no. Not idea the devil's latest. Where he is, his number or anything. I don't talk to him. And honestly, I don't talk to my mother. Michelle is estranged from her immediate family, which is something that could indicate a problematic personality or possibly a dysfunctional childhood or family life. It's likely that her support system is limited, which is problematic as she's a single mother with incomplete education and she likely needs help. The lack of relationship with her parents could also indicate, like the trust no one tattoo implies, that she's been betrayed by the people she should have been able to count on in her life. And how no many, uh, spaghetti. How many you have? No regrets. Well, two daughters. Water check. I had two girls and two boys. What's your um? Uh, what's your daughter's name? How old is she? She's seventeen. 
She stay with you? Bless you. She got a phone number? No, no phone. Rika. Um, She's here. Okay. Uh, How long is the video? Um, this one's you got long. You boyfriend or spouse? No. Uh, an hour and 14 ex, minutes. Um, the Hi, father, Is that your ex-boyfriend? Yeah. So you have four children all together? Yeah. None of them are in school? No. Where are your other two kids, Stoney and Steven? At my house. At the old house. <gasps> oh, Where no. Where are your house, they? Maddie, thanks for joining. Who put them in there? Michelle lowers her voice, but bluntly answers. Her lowered tone indicates shame, but she says this with no real emotion otherwise. Oh She's my God! She's to be willing to tell the truth right away, which is somewhat unusual in interrogations. Instead of blaming anyone else for putting the children in the freezer, she's taken responsibility for that part of the crime. Wait, she just right said away. it right away. When the moving crew first opened the freezer, they found a teenage girl's frozen body inside. She was completely naked and covered in frost, except for a large black plastic bag that was placed over her. Her head was pressed against the inner side of the freezer wall, where there were blood stains next to her face. A long piece of black fabric, possibly a silk scarf, was still fastened around her neck, and there were notable injuries to her throat, her right cheek, right brow, her bicep, and her chest. Why? Under the girl were several blankets, but because her body was frozen to the side of the freezer, only a portion of the blankets could be cut away. Oh my but the police God. were able to cut a hole, which revealed another frozen body hidden under the first. This one, a preteen boy. Neither body was able to be removed from the freezer, and instead, the entire thing was sent to the Wayne County Medical Examiner. Oh Why did you do that? my God! <sighs> when you say they, who are you referring to? <gasps> Michelle alleges that two of her children, Stephen and Stoney, were inappropriately touching and assaulting her youngest son, Alex. Oh my it's important to note that none of Michelle's claims about Stephen and Stoney have ever been substantiated, and her allegations could certainly all be fabricated. If this is true, this behavior is extremely disturbing, and why her older kids would do this to their sibling would need to be explored. Behavior like this shows signs of extreme trauma, mental illness, or is behavior that may have been done to them, as kids will often do to others what was done to them. It's extremely rare for children to assault their sibling without them being victims of this kind of abuse themselves, oh, especially no. when they're this young. Since Michelle's report of Alex being abused by his two siblings was never substantiated, this point in the interrogation could really just be the beginning of Michelle's fabricated story. A story that she either knows is a lie, or a story that she has convinced herself is true. Maybe Michelle is delusional. Ugh. Maybe this fabricated story has helped her cope all this time with what she did to her own children. Delusions serve many purposes. Oftentimes, it helps the affected person escape a painful reality, or cope with fear, guilt, or shame. Oh my I'm gonna find God. out what's going on. Been going on for years. That was pretty spot on. Diapers. It seems highly unlikely that if this were true, Michelle wouldn't be aware of this occurring. The child would have very obvious injuries. In addition, this family all lived together with their mother in a small home, not attending school, and she wasn't working. It would be very difficult for kids to do the alleged actions routinely and for years without her knowledge. Michelle is either extremely neglectful, in denial, or not being fully truthful about her awareness of this situation. Mm. How did you become aware that he was getting... Good night, Onizaki. Oh, I can't have one day. Have good sleep. <gasps> was basically saying, come look what he was doing. He, was, he wasn't doing it by the time I went in the living room. But she said, show mom what you was doing. So he had to little wrestle me in. Michelle describes how her son was using the two dolls Valorant to show will be her tomorrow. the inappropriate things his siblings were allegedly doing to him. Before tomorrow moving for on sure. to the topic of when this first happened. I don't when think I'm playing Valorant tonight. This was, a, this was a while ago. This incident didn't just happen. When you say a while ago, was it a year, two years, a month, around there? Around when? Um, year two. I don't know why he acted it out like that. A it's just, I don't want nobody to think that anything's wrong with my son. You get what I'm saying? I mean, unless I Wendy wrong. needs a fill. No, nobody, nobody's making any judgments. I just want you to tell me then what happened. I gotta be nobody's a good friend I know it's like to read it when they read it, they're not going to understand. Like, no, listen, listen. That's why I want to record exactly what you tell me, okay? So nobody's passing any judgment on your son. Or I will finish anybody. Ace so Attorney eventually, happened, okay? TM. So just feel comfortable telling me what happened. I want you to make nothing up or think about how it's going to look. I just want you to tell me so we can help you, okay? And we can help your son if he needs it. The officer tries to ease her concerns about how this will sound, so Michelle continues to talk and is as honest as possible. She frames it by saying they want to help her. However, the officer is not there to help Michelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Michelle sounds a bit more distressed here. She's more emotional now than at any other point throughout the interrogation so far. And after he told him, he said he came to space, and I said, anybody do that to you? And he said, no. And then he put his head on and he said, yes. I said, who the you know what I mean? Upstairs. 
Oh, God. So I went upstairs with And I asked him, what's your f***ing brother? Oh, your effing brother. What's your f***ing brother? And so you asked somebody did that to him? Yes. So I'm like, why are you playing like that? I told him that's nasty as hell. Why are you playing with oh, that? I said, somebody do it to you first. He said, no. And he had his head on and he said, yes. And I asked him who he said, I just went straight upstairs with him, well, all three of us. And I'm asking him, and he said, no, he's lying. I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, so I'm looking at the both of them. And I said, what? Because my understanding was, you got to understand, was a lot younger than she was like over a year ago. And he had to be quiet about the all this time. So when he's telling me, he's getting loud. He's like, yes, he did. Yes, he really did this to you. Why didn't you tell me? Because they said they was going to kill me and he beat me up. I'm t- I looked and I told him to tell me the oh truth before I beat him. Oh, my God. And he says, well, I hung on him, but that's it. And then he said, no, it's not. <gasps> I just remember walking out the room. Mm. I mean, I remember everything else. I'm just saying, it's like, I couldn't say I wasn't, I wasn't, like, out of my, I wasn't out of my mind. You understand? When do you think this was? Roughly two minutes Oh, ago. God, so sad. What did you do at that point? I sat on the floor for a while by the edge of the door, and I kept, I just remember I kept going, what the f***? I told my man, I said, tell me the truth. You said you you uh you went outside and sat on the floor? No, I went in the hallway. Like okay, I was in his bedroom when we were talking to him about all this because that's where he was at. And I just stepped like in the hallway between the door and you know like the threshold, and I sat on the floor. And I'm looking at them like, what the? F- this is your brother, you know? So I asked, him, are you telling the truth? And the way he was crying, he just wouldn't stop talking. He said, yes, you do. You're in my bed. But they did this to him every day. Every night. What did you do after that? Did you do? Did you take any physical action towards? Not just yet. I, and then I just closed the door. And I just kept looking at him. I said, I can't believe you. I took him downstairs because he was telling me more and more stuff, and it was not making sense. It's just that got him telling me everything. I went back upstairs and I opened the door because I fully believed him, and I knew that's what he had did. He told me things that. After finding out, now it makes sense. You get what I'm saying? It's like certain things. I'm like, what's wrong? It's or well, he crying, oh. or he fell out the bunk bed, and I'm fussing to him, take toys away from him. It's like I'm fussing. He didn't even do. What did you do when you went back upstairs? I punched him. I just started punching him. I just kept punching him. At what point did you stop punching him? Oh no, that's not how he. I stopped punching him because he looked up and he said, "Okay, okay, I'm ready to tell the truth." After she says that Stephen admitted he was ready to tell the truth, Michelle opens up both hands quickly and turns down her mouth. This body language may indicate that she's seeking approval from the detective, or as if she's saying, see, I told you. I said, did you, this is what you did then? He just said yes. I pushed him again. Although it's possible that Stephen did abuse Alex, it's also possible that he falsely confessed only to escape the punishment. Oh it's convenient my God. for Michelle to report that she supposedly got a confession out of Stephen because she might believe that this adds validity to her story of the alleged abuse towards Alex. Let me ask you this. This is awful. This is, I don't think I've seen one this intense before. Just imagine what she's saying is true. First of all, it's not, it's not valid for her to kill her kids for that. But like, it's still an awful, awful situation. Awful. Like the, it's, oh God, it's sickening. It's so sickening. This is really, really bad. This is one of the worst. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen one like this. Sad. So sad. Okay. How long been in the freezer? Two years. I want to say two years. You said almost two years or two years? I want to say two years. How long have you been in the freezer? About a, about a year. She died when? On um May 25th. 
of what year? Last year? It would have to be. I'm just a blur. This was apparently her daughter, who Michelle stated died May 25th, but was unable to recall the year. Michelle then said that the other child was killed August 30th, 2012. Despite it all being a blur, she was ultimately able to remember the dates. It's shocking that no one reported either child missing and shows the isolation these children must have been living in for no one to notice they were missing for so long. Michelle must have been lying about where they were or they had very little, if any, interaction with other people. One of her neighbors eventually came forward to speak with investigators and she explained that Michelle told her she'd made Stoney and Stephen move away to live with their aunt because they'd been doing mean things to Alex, such as taking food away from him. As well, one of Michelle's friends was interviewed by police and he stated that any time he asked about where Stoney and Stephen were, Michelle told him that they were upstairs in their room or at an aunt's house. According to Alexander Dorsey, the father of Stoney and Michelle's surviving oldest daughter, when he asked about Stoney, she also gave the same answer that she was living with an aunt. Apparently, these explanations were enough to keep people from asking more questions about where the two children were because no one seemed to realize they were gone. How did you... That's crazy. I can't, like, hold him. Hey, that. After she's asked how Stephen died, Bitch, Michelle's you hands did go from being open to in tight fists. The fuck? Generally, and why are you crying? Someone's fingers, the more relaxed they are. As someone's stress increases, the fingers instinctively close. Having one's hands pulled up as the child does indicates high stress. Just holding him. Well, what caused him to die? I didn't ask you what you were doing. I asked you, how did your son I don't know what I'm saying? Is this, he died from. The officer's tone is noticeably harsh. Oh my God, I'm so mad. The fact that she didn't directly answer the question she was asked. This asserts her authority and control over the interrogation. Mm -hmm. From what I put on him, but it wasn't, he didn't die right then. You get what I'm saying? What? I'm saying I couldn't tell you specifically what happened inside. <gasps> when you say you afflicted on him, what did you afflict? I was punching him. So you say you don't know what caused him to die? No, I know I did. What I'm saying is, I don't know specifically, what's going on his body did. You get what I'm saying? Oh, is there some no. things that we can, I don't want mine to know because she feel bad and it's not her fault in any way. It's just that me and you talking. Poor okay. baby. Well, like I said, my aunt us, but after it happened, I called her. She was mad at me because, you know, I, it's just she wouldn't be my life together, period. Okay. So I called her and I asked her if anything happened, you know, you take the kids. She was like angel. You've always child, been not a baby. Tired. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of kids. That's definitely not. She was saying to just get yourselves together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't want her to like hear that and think, oh my God, if I would have, I don't want to tell her, but I'm like, what did you want to tell her? Out. Everything, because you know she was a cop. Not she's the first person I called, and I couldn't even say it to her. The officer is relatively non-responsive to Michelle. She's giving a confession without any hesitation, and therefore the officer just needs to listen and ask follow-up questions. Interrogation techniques so far have not been needed. Most suspects are not this candid about their crimes, and at the very least will try to claim the killing was- Okay, just to recap, this woman has four kids, or had four kids. The cops found a refrigerator with two of her kids in the fridge. One kid was in there two years ago. The other kid was in there one year ago. So she killed two of her kids. She's claiming that she killed the first kid because her other child was saying that the other kid, that freezer, yeah, freezer. What did I, what did I say? What did I say besides freezer? Did I say refrigerator? fridge freezer freezer yeah oh shit I should have the other child was saying that the first kid that she killed was sexually assaulting him and so the mother beat him to death and she's saying that he didn't die right away he died from internal damage that's what she's claiming it was an accident the officer is trying to refrain from any reaction to what she's hearing so that Michelle doesn't feel judged. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but you still haven't... I asked you the question, how did your son die? Okay, so you did, you did something. I need you to tell me specifically what it was. So you just punched him? 
like just punching him to keep get him out. Yes. Yeah. Um, the officer tries to get Michelle back on track as she's not making much sense and seems to need to be redirected back to the relevant issues. I mean, what did you do? You punched him? Basically everywhere. Why? Um, I choked him. With your hands? Yes. That's not how he died. What else did you do? I'm saying, I, I, you so you I'm punched saying. him everywhere, you choked him. What else? I mean, you want to come clean, right? You want to get this off your chest. It's just me and you talking. Okay, nobody's here to judge you. It's not about to judge. I know, it's just... It's painful. Is it painful to you? No, it's evil. It's evil what you did? Is it evil? Yeah. Okay, so you're judging yourself. When the officer sees Ooh. Michelle freeze up, she tries to get her talking again by making it seem like this is just a conversation between the two of them. In reality, it's being recorded and will be shown to judges, lawyers, and jurors if necessary to obtain a conviction. The officer gets her to admit that what she did I'm was judging. evil to show Michelle understands right from wrong. This is a legal requirement to be held criminally accountable for one's actions. Because I love them. You love them, okay? But, I won't, man. That's how I feel. Like, y'all know. Anybody who know me is going to love my kids. And it's like, oh. and they turn around all this time. I'm keeping y'all away from everybody else. And it's y'all. It's like, I miss y'all sales. There's no other outsiders. There's no outsiders that ended up hurting y'all. And that's the one thing I've always been worried about in my life. Because that's what happened to me. That's why I don't talk to my mother. You know? They didn't do anything. We're going to gonna get, we're gonna get to that. But I need you to, I need you to take it off your chest. And I need you to tell me what you did. You told me some stuff. But I just don't. Hmm. Like, like a bathtub, right? Hot water. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I'm not great. And and I did like this. I stood him in there. In the hot water? Yeah. No, did and you? He did got you, right back out. Did you run the hot water first and then dump him? What do you mean? Hot so water. I cut. I grabbed him in the bathroom and I was still talking to him. And then I'm asking him, like, why are you doing these sex? And I hate him. I and it's okay. We're just talking about and I just I cut the hot water on. And I'm still talking to him, but it's like I'm threatening him. And I didn't plan on doing it, but I did it. It's like, I can't explain it to you. So you turned the hot water in the bathroom, in the bathtub? Yes. And I, if you don't tell me everything, and tell me exactly why, I, I, just everything, like what you've been doing. Did you put him in the bathtub? I stood him up in there. You stood him up in there? Yeah. So his feet got really messed up. Oh, my God. It was God. basically a rotation of that, punching him, just hurting him. Just, just, he's, he's skinny. How long did that go for? Um... In total, after I found out, he was in there four or five days. And I made him stay in his room. I took him food because I didn't know what to do. So I called my aunt first to see, you know, but I ended up, I guess, checking out. I didn't tell her. She knew nothing of what was going on. Michelle admits to premeditation and how she harmed and burned her son over a number of days. She wasn't acting in the heat of the moment when she was informed about the assault, which makes her guilty of first-degree murder. This admission was only after the detective insisted and kept asking Michelle what else she did. He started telling me everything. You know, he said he hate. He said he took his dad away from him. It was just, it's just a lot of things. Like we talked for a very long time, and he just told me a lot of stuff, and I just had to go downstairs. The stuff that her oldest son told her may have been true. However, it's also quite possible that it was made up and was just his attempt to stop the torture. He may have felt like if he just admitted to his mother what she already suspected and believed was true, that she would stop punishing him. He'd already tried denying the abuse, but that didn't work. So he may have been trying another tactic in the hopes of getting a different result. So how long after that incident does Stephen die? Was how long? Mean? Okay, so you beat him up the one day, right? And then five days go by, you beat him up again? No, the 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 cause this makes sense. The hot water was the night before, the afternoon before. Mm hmm I was one on one something in the afternoon. So are you telling me, because when I asked you what exactly did you do to Basically, that day when I found out, I messed him up. He was still walking around functioning. Mm -hmm. He was just in that room. And then it's the more and more started telling me throughout the days and everything he remembers since he was eating Cheerios. The officer gets Michelle to admit he passed away after the extensive abuse to show she had ample opportunity to get him help if she regretted her actions. But she chose not to. Mm -hmm. I've been calling around see what to do when I ask the police. I, I probably, when I ask the police, when there's two brothers, I put it in the scenario as, as somebody else's situation. Mm -hmm. And if one brother was and the other one, can y'all take the little one to jail even though he's a minor? 
Why would they take the little one to jail? Not jail, but like juvenile. Mm -hmm. Calling the police suggests that she may have had some conflicting feelings about what she was doing. However, these doubts weren't enough to stop her from continuing. After hearing Michelle's hypothetical, the police should have at least come out to investigate the situation and speak to the children. A simple welfare check may have saved their Good lives. Night, Peachy. This case shows many flaws in the system. And sadly, this isn't the only example of a missed opportunity to save these children's lives. Back in 2005, the Michigan State investigated Michelle for allegations of child neglect. At that time, her eldest child would have been around five. The claims of abuse must have been somewhat substantiated because Michelle was referred to counseling, but her children were not removed from her home. Oh, I'm trying to get a timeline here because you do these things to them, right? How long do you, you do these things, you assault them, you put them in the water. How many days go by before he dies? I, I want to say no, matter, no more than a week. Oh, The officer my goes back God. over the entire story Michelle has told to solidify her story and make sure it's clear and the timeline is explicit. When things occurred, it's important to show premeditation and to show the long and serious suffering her children endured. Michelle sits in silence as the detective continues writing. At this point, she's sitting with her head down. Maybe the emotional exhaustion of the interrogation is starting to really set in. So you said the first day you punched them several yeah. times. Yeah. The second day you didn't touch them. No. But the third? The second day I was like throwing up and was really, I had been drinking. Uh, so if I could, like, from the first day, period, I just, I just couldn't get up. You say you was throwing up? It's like when I get up. Maybe I would have went back in there, but... Did you say you were throwing up? Yeah, the only reason I didn't go, honestly, the only reason I didn't go back in that second day, mm. because I was... Every time I got up, I'm throwing up, and I'm sick, and I... But then the third, the bed, fourth, and the fifth day, you, you continue. The following days, you continue to assault them. Is that correct? Not drinking. But did you continue? Yes. So, okay. What did you do, the same thing? I was going back, for, just punching him, basically, and choking him. Oh, my God. Typically, when these sorts of horrific crimes occur... The perpetrator is often under the influence or had been using substances close to the time the crime occurred. She also said she was throwing up the second day of the abuse, and the only reason she didn't continue abusing her son the second day is because she was feeling sick. Yeah, and it was like, this is how it went, like, I talked to him for a second, and he'll say something, and I'll just start punching him. And I'll stop, and then I'll start talking to him again. And then it was like, no answer he gave was... Who witnessed this? Stoney. And who else? She was downstairs. She witnessed. Stoney and... Yes, well, she was downstairs, but it mean me doing this to Steven. Yeah. Yeah, she saw me punching him. She saw you punching him? Yes, both of everybody. It wasn't the first day, though, because I had told her to go downstairs with well, the girls, but at one point, yeah, they did. Everybody saw that. Michelle now admits to someone witnessing her assaults on her son, which will be useful to corroborate her admission. If the witness was a minor, she'll also be charged with endangering the welfare of a minor. A child witnessing abuse is extremely damaging to them mentally and emotionally. At what point do you put Stephen in a prison? Because they died. When I came back in the room, he says, I have to throw up. Oh, Say my God. Well, when I came back from he says, I have to throw up. So I walked him to the bathroom. He didn't throw up. He said I had to poop. He didn't poop. Oh, so God. So I just went back in the room. He laid back down. And his breathing was sounding, it sounded weird. Oh, my God. It was just. And I put my hand right here on his chest. And I, his heartbeat was like, it was crazy. I put my ear up to it. It was like, he's just like, he's going like this. So he was fading out? And I tried to do CPR on him. You tried CPR on him? I tried. While he was still alive? No, when he when he started looking like that and started doing that. So he, did he stop it. breathing when you tried CP, CPR? No, he stopped before that. So he stopped breathing and you, you tried to do CPR? At him and he's going, hmm. Okay. Hmm. So I didn't hear it no more. So I'm just looking at him like, oh my God. And then, like, the food I had gave him, um, I had to feed him, actually. He told me his stomach hurt and he didn't want to eat. You know, oh you don't eat, you know. God. This was the night before he said, have some pizza or something like that. And I'm like, no. I actually told him, you can't have no pizza. So I saw him giving him a little healthy choice. The smart choice is, uh, is beef stew. No. 
I just know I was trying to do that. And I smelled it. He I, probably I had it. so it's much internal damage. Interestingly, Michelle appears to be especially triggered by remembering the smell of the beef stew. Smell can be an important part of memory. Michelle has appeared detached while recalling most of what she did to Stephen, but the sensory experience of this specific memory may have been difficult for her to push away. Her hands reach up toward her face, which is likely an adapter behavior signaling stress. At that point, he stopped breathing. Yes. And what did I do? Yeah. Let's close the door and sat there with him for a while. So you didn't try to give him CPR or you didn't? Oh, after Idiot. he was gone, so I'm like, after yeah. nothing has happened. Okay, so he stopped breathing at some point. I had to get. Did you ever give him CPR? Yeah, I'm like, I don't when know how to do, do it, and I never. So I you never did give him CPR because you don't know CPR. What do you mean? You you told me that you gave him CPR. You're not listening then. That's what I'm asking. I don't want you to tell me. Okay, it's like when I went to blow in his mouth. <sighs> that's what I'm saying about the soup. Mm -hmm. Right on his nose. So I'm. I took it as. You are still breathing. So I'm doing like this. And then I heard something. I'm like, that's right. You know, I'm like, get up. And I, up. When I'm doing like this, it's making, I, I can't explain it. It's just making, you know. The officer is now trying to ascertain whether or not Michelle made any efforts at all to save her son's life. Did you call for medical assistance after he died? No. After I stopped trying to do that. I just said he was too long and I was just looking at him. Why not? Why didn't you call for somebody? Oh, How did Stoney die? Stupid. Stoney, I meant Stupid. to do it. Stupid. Excuse me? With Stoney, I meant to do it. Like, with Stephen, was like, I can't even feel the accident, but it's not. If somebody died from what you do to them, then it's that. But Stoney, I did mean to. Michelle admits that with Stephen, it was an accident but she verbalizes awareness that Stephen died because of what she did to him. Her actions show at minimum a complete reckless disregard for his life. She also admits she meant to kill Stoney and therefore has implicated herself for first-degree murder. Oh my God. Once she'd God. already killed one child and gotten away with it, killing someone else may have felt easier. Oh After my God. she admits that she God. intended to kill Stoney, Michelle looks away and then looks down, putting her hand on her face. Why? This likely reflects that she was feeling guilty and didn't want to see the detective's face while she was making this confession. After you finished holding him, what did you do with Stephen's body? You what? Put it in freezer. Her whisper could indicate that she is ashamed of what she did. Did you do anything? You just put him in the freezer? Did you put some clothes I on him? I can't believe this is do? real. Did you put him in the freezer as he was? Well, yeah, this um, Paul Frank blanket that he, he really like, like I a lot. I cannot believe this is real. So I was wrapped. You wrapped him in what kind of blanket? It's like uh, Paul Frank. You know what I'm the monkey paw front on kids' clothing, or that was his favorite blanket, Paul Frank. It's like, oh, um, you know, it's the name brand has a monkey on it, and it was a big comfort. It's Paul Frank right with monkeys on it. And like, I remember he used to argue with them, I don't touch my blanket, you know. So I just. <laughs> That's right. We don't know what she did to Stoney yet. becomes tearful now and shows emotion about her wrapping her son in a monkey pattern blanket and freezing his dead body. Is this their father? Yes. Okay. They got in touch with him. I don't know. You want him to? Yeah. Okay. I'll let him know. Is there any way um, you can find out if they got in touch with him yet? Because I know what's on the news. Do you want him? Would that make you feel more comfortable? Yeah, because they're showing, well, it's no more comfortable. It's just, they're showing the house and... Yeah, they're, they're, getting, they're, they're getting in contact with them. They're not going to let them see that. Your other ones, that's what you're worried about? My kids? Yeah. The kids, they were with me. I know, but they don't today. know what's going on, do they? Yes. They do? Definitely, yes. Okay. So I'm going to their dad, can somebody... Yeah, they're going to... Tell him before he sees it on news, because he knows my house and I know they were yeah. already showing it. They, yeah, they're doing that now. What did you do to your daughter, Stoney? Should I tell you what happened with her before? No, we're going to get okay. to that. I just need to know what you did to her, and then we're going to get back to what she did. Oh, okay? my God. Oh, God. Here we go. So I'm going to tell you what's leading up. Tell me how you feel more comfortable. If that's how you feel more comfortable, you can tell me like that. But we're going to get to that. I just kind of would rather you answer this question, and then you could tell me what, and then I'm going to ask you what led up to it. Okay. Um, first. Same thing, very first thing. 
I punched her so hard because she was still doing that after when he called me about Steven. And he said he was so scared of Stoney. I'm like, why wouldn't you tell me this? He said, because she kept saying that, don't say nothing, or she don't beat me up and all that. Whatever, it's just... So I found out nine months later so, that she had been still doing this so after what, Steven. When did you actually... One day they were arguing about something, and they came in the room, and he said, don't sit next to me. And I said, stop acting like that to her. He was like, oh, I don't want to sit next to me. She didn't mean to me anyway. And I said, me how? He was like, she used to kick me like this. I'm like, so why you didn't tell me? Then he started saying, my diaper. I just got, just, I don't know. I'm like, what do you, you know, it's, it started off with Stoney. And he ended up telling me, Stoney was doing that to Steven first. See what I'm saying? And I looked at her and I'm like, you sat here. We talked. We all talk to Steven together. Michelle expresses more disdain for her daughter, Stoney, as she claims she continued to allegedly assault Alex after she killed Steven for doing the same thing. This is why she feels more justified in killing Stoney and freely admits she did so intentionally. It's possible that Michelle felt very angry with herself for punishing and killing Steven after she found out that he may have been a victim first himself. Oh my God. Stoney was the one that to Steven first. It does seem unlikely that if this was true, Stephen never admitted that Stoney allegedly abused him during his days of torture. Wait, so let me, let, me get this, me. let me get this straight. So you're saying wow. that when you uh, told you that Stoney used to kick him and said he something about his diaper. Yeah, he said, said something about his diaper. How do you get those two things out of Because I don't see in that. What do you mean? Okay. Wait, what do you mean? I told you that Stoney used to kick him. That's what I'm and saying. Said I need about to go diaper. through how it came out. Okay. Because they did not only just him. They were taking his food. It sounds petty. They blame things on him. But I fussed at him, but it wasn't him. They take his food. Even at school, Stephen would get up and go grab his food. I'm like, y'all, I get $700 and snaps every month. Y'all eat. This is like you steal. When you see him in the hallway, you take jabs at him. The officer asked Michelle how exactly Alex told her that Stoney was assaulting him. Well, he started talking about, so we're sitting on the edge of the bed, and then we're talking. And I looked at Stoney because after it happened, I told them. So if y'all did anything, I will hurt you. And he's like, we went to hurt you. get what I'm saying? So we're sitting there. He started talking about his diaper. And I said, when did Stoney kick you? He said, she kicked me and I rolled. I said, as big as you are. He was like, I was little. He's talking about way back. It's somewhat surprising that Alex recalls what occurred to him when he was still young enough to be in diapers, unless he wore diapers for an extended period of time, which could be the case. There may have been some kind of strain in her relationship with her oldest two children before Alex made claims about being abused. And he's just he talking. It's like he's so confident. He's talking, telling me everything. And it's like, I don't know what to believe. But I know he's not lying because he's just going. Okay. I'm not about to get to it. So when I said rolling, what do you mean rolling? How she roll you? You're big. She kicked the hell out of you like that to make you roll. And he says, I was little. She used to push me over with my cuffs and then, and then she took my diaper off. And I said, what do you mean take her diaper? Take your diaper off. He said, remember when I, was, I had the diapers and you could pull them off right here? She take my diaper off. She touched my butt. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, I just, I just remember I felt hot as hell. Here it seems like Michelle is describing how her uncontrolled anger and rage starts to build to a point where she doesn't think, she just reacts. This is typical of people with severe anger management issues. Yeah. They go into blind rages and do things that they later regret. Yeah. This moment of getting hot is likely similar to what happened when she harmed Stephen prior to his death. I feel like she's just I incredibly just, just abusive and just acts on her Still, emotions. This doesn't explain the murders entirely because we know that with Stephen, the abuse went on for days. Blind rages are usually only momentary and the person eventually comes to and realizes what they're doing. Michelle had time to realize what was happening to Stephen and either stop the abuse or get medical help for her son. Needless to say, there's definitely plenty of evidence of premeditation here. Mm -hmm. It was like, and Ma, and she did that nasty stuff too. I said, what nasty stuff? And I'm looking at her and I just walked straight up to her. She said, you know, nasty stuff. And I walked straight up to her and I did like this, put up against the wall. I said, what the f did you do? I looked at her and I said, tell me now. So you grab her. She's still breathing because you're asking her questions. Yeah. And then what happened? Do you squeeze tighter where she can't breathe? What do you do? After he told me that, it was like, a, like, she just slammed her. You know? So you grabbed harder? 
not grass. I just got it. I, 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 already, I already had a good grip. So I did like this. You know, you sling somebody down. Try to see what he said. I just threw her down. I kissed her. God. She got up. Was backing up. And I asked her, oh, have you been doing this to him too? And she was like, yes. Did she was doing that to Steven? Yes. Did you do this? I'm looking at her. And then that's what kind of f***ed me up because Steven was always an arm baby. People was like, I ain't hanging on your she shoulder. Say? Sony? She yeah. said yes. Because this is right here saying, telling everything basically. Michelle admits that she choked Stoney while she confessed to the alleged assault. This makes it hard to judge how reliable the confession is because she would have been fearful for her life at the time. Yeah. At what point do you kill Stoney? Um, I hit Stoney in the head. Um, With what? It's like a full of stick. What was that? It's like a stick. Michelle takes a few long pauses before responding, which isn't her normal speech pattern. She struggles to say that she hit Stoney on the head, or maybe she hesitated because she was trying to remember what happened. Hitting Stoney in the head with a stick is a felony assault, as she's using a weapon to assault her. It's a wooden stick? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's thick, you know what I mean? Oh, God, this is one. sick. So I had a mind like this. And while I was talking to her, when I'm looking at her, and I'm just asking you, why did you do it? Tell me the truth. And she just came out. She was like, hurry, hurry. I couldn't. So I'm hitting her in her head, and I'm like, he was a baby. Um... How big was it about that thing? About this. It was blue. I just started talking for a minute, and she was just quiet over him. I just turned around, looked at her, and I went back to her. And I punched her again. And I just told her once, I mean, I just, you know, um, same thing. I so told her to he tells you some more stuff, you punch her, and then you tell her to go to her room? Yes. No, I didn't just punch her once, though. You know what I'm saying? It went on for a while. Michelle oh offers details that the officer God. doesn't ask for. This shows that she feels justified about what she did. Instead of minimizing her behavior as most suspects do, she clarifies to let the officer know it was more severe. She was up in her room for They're like just little kids. Two days. I wouldn't talk to her. Like even if it was true that about, they were sexually assaulting you know, I their did I did. siblings, like, like I where is this behavior learned from? Myself and I gave her food because y'all was stealing food from and This does not justify her killing them. That's insanity. You know. She's abusive. So okay, she gave I her food. giving her. I stopped giving her so much. So I fed her like twice a day. And I didn't touch her for a while. <coughs> Let me ask you this. Did you at some point, did you stop giving her food, period? What do you mean? Did you starve her? Basically. It went down from two times a day to one, and it was only oatmeal. Oh, my God. Oatmeal and water. Like Stephen, Stoney didn't die in the heat of Michelle finding out about the abuse. She was slowly and methodically killed by being repeatedly harmed, starved, and tortured. This evidence shows another premeditated killing. So you basically starved her, God. right? Is that how she dies? No. Okay. There's more? Tell me more. Okay, so... How long did this go on for? Uh, in almost two weeks. But the hidden wasn't. Oh, my Here's God. starvation? I, no. Do I didn't mess her up that first day. about no, Jesus I somewhere else? I did mess her up that first day. She was still walking around, and you know, I just I don't know if I, I don't know how was functioning, but I take her little food up to her, and I even go up and I sit in the corner. I just talk to her and I look at her like we talk for a second. I was, you know, I just kept saying, "How do you do this?" and I just talk about all of us and what we were supposed to be like. And I just leave the room. Oh, you guys this probably again, couldn't see the comment, depravity. but like because they're just, just like spamming Stephen, it in chat over and children, over. Which is something that's done when a person is in a more calm and rational mental state. To then inflicting abuse that ultimately killed the children. Jesus is here. This is what I'm trying to get to. Him. I don't know if you guys can see I'm it, but like her. they might have been hidden know, already. You but brother, you they're just spamming it over and over. He's retarded. He heard her say that he's retarded. He's annoying. Yeah, and she just went, oh, she cried because I wanted her to give him a hug. And I said, you don't love him, and she was like, no. I remember I punched her, and I told her to say it again. She's saying, no, like, it hurts you. You hate him that much. She don't want to hug him. And so what did you do when she did that? The blue pipe. Excuse me? The, the blue pipe, the wood thing. Uh -huh. 
Was it a pipe or a stick? Well, it was, you know, you can, I guess you can, it's a, it's a wooden, but I call it a pipe because it's, it's you're holding your hand. It? Yeah, and it's blue. <clears throat> Where did it come from? One of the bad parts, like, you know what I mean? What, was it metal or was no. it wood? It's wood. And it was about a foot long? Thick. Okay. Okay, so you, you hit her with that? Yeah, when I say so thick. Go to the gym. Go, to the gym. Stand, go now. Stern, that's what I'm saying. Go it's, now. It, you know, um, I hit her with that. Where did you hit her at? I hit her head. Mostly in her head. She had. Several times? A lot, yes. Like, um, little lumps everywhere. So she survived yeah. that assault? Yes, and she was, she was fine. Not fine, but she was mobile. Okay, so, the, so what happened Not fine, then? but she was okay, mobile. Was mobile. Well, that's, no, no, I'm, okay, so I'm trying to get to this part, but I'll finish this out. <coughs> I was looking at her like, what the f***? And I just grabbed her, and I'm like, in the closet. She's got a towel. I just put it right here, and I put ice wrap in it, so I'm going to bed and just keep it back. She asked me, because she sit up? So I said, okay. You said you go in the closet and grab a towel? Yeah, go in the closet. It's a washcloth, and I put ice in it, put it up here, but she said it hurts. What? And she was sleepy, so I let her go to sleep. I know I told her to go to her room. Oh, God. And I'm after I finish helping her with this, I just, I wouldn't drink. You want to drink? go sit in the basement. No, I don't. I'm you went to the basement to drink. What an insane but woman. Jolene using alcohol to cope with her emotions. She doesn't allege that she has diminished capacity due to her drinking, nor would that be a viable defense as she can clearly recall details of the days that led to her children's deaths. You know everything you're doing is what? Um, I know that. And I, it's like, I can't explain to y'all in between, like, crying, like, what the f you doing? Yeah, it's your f kids. It, you're right. For 30 minutes, we've been listening to this woman murdering her children, and the word fuck had to be censored. That's actually true. Like, there are worse things than swear words. This is crazy. Oh my God, right this whole, this whole video like, should be censored, but look at us. Just the fact that look at us now. Her, I can't. I used to tell my baby she's not going to save you. You know what I mean? Like, she's not going to save you. So he told me that. I'm telling you. He said, thank you for saving me. He said that. No. I just don't understand why he didn't tell me about her sooner. And that still wouldn't have been happening. But Joe clearly understands right from wrong. This shows her criminal intent or intention to commit the crime, which is relevant when charging someone with murder. So what ended up happening? Smother. Hmm? You smothered her? She again exhibits shame by her lower tone of voice. Was it that same night? That's you right. go to the basement, you drink? Oh, no, no. I'm, I get like that, I'm too, no. This was a while later. Like a day, two days later? No, maybe days, because... Oh. Like, I, mean, I don't know. But, um, so after a few Who's days... Who's laughing? There's, there's people outside of this room. The audio is picking up people in the building. Like, you can kind of hear background noise a little bit. I'm pretty sure the people outside of this room are not laughing at this situation. They're probably having a whole different conversation outside of this interview room. Go by. Right? You just go upstairs and you smell her? No. Okay, tell me what. This is, I want to say, after. It's like I can touch her again. For a few days. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. It's like we're going on. In the second week now, and I'm just in this house now. Can't hear nothing. It kind of the audio kind of picks up I'm a little bit from about, like man, a distance. That's not okay, but I'm trying to. I want you to walk me through it. So, do you go upstairs and just say, you know what, I'm gonna smother her, and you can smother her, no, or do you guys have that. a conversation? She was laying on the floor. She said she Where was at? Laying in her room. Okay. So I came in and I sat down. So you go in her room. Yeah. And I scared her because she was asleep, but. I sat down in front of her, so you wake up. She basically wake up and saw my face, and she was like this. And you know, I just kept asking her, are you ready to apologize? Um, now, when you asked her if she was ready to apologize, what did she say? She said, there's nothing wrong with my son. That's all I know. Nobody's saying what's wrong with your son. What did she say, though? When you said, are you ready to apologize to what did she say? What'd she say? She doesn't want to apologize to him. So she said no? Yeah, but it's like, it wasn't a flat out no. It's like, I am sorry for doing it to somebody, but you're not sorry for doing that to him? This is what I'm saying. Like, What did she say? What did she say? She just looked at me. So she, she didn't say nothing like this. Stormy doesn't do that. She's hard to get out of. She's like, she's like, you know, I'm like, Stoney. So she never said apologize. no. 
she was saying no the, a couple days before. <sighs> and that's what she kept saying no. So I'm like, are you ready to apologize to him? She just said, I'm sorry for doing it to How are you not sorry for your brother? She said she was sorry for doing it to what? Oh, God. No, I misspoke. Not for doing it. She said, I'm sorry for doing it, period, to somebody. But you're not going to say you're sorry for doing it. If the whole abuse story is, in fact, some sort of delusion, and if Michelle does have a history of being abused herself, then this scene that Michelle is describing almost seems like she's trying to elicit that apology for herself. It's possible that Michelle may have been having conflict with Stephen before she murdered him, and possibly also with Stoney when she targeted her. The conflict could have been related to other issues, and this may have triggered Michelle to choose Stoney and Stephen as the guilty ones. Oh, no. Since her claims of the abuse towards Alex weren't confirmed, it's important to consider the very likely possibility that Michelle wasn't really defending Alex. It's very possible that this tragedy that occurred in Michelle's home was the result of long-standing child abuse inflicted by Michelle onto her children. When childhood abuse is chronic, and when the parent inflicts severe forms of abuse that cause serious injury to the children, there's a risk of the parent one day going too far. The wow. abuse can easily turn deadly, which seems to be what occurred with Stoney and Stephen. It seems that Stoney's death was more so a direct murder, unlike Stephen, who died as a result of the abuse. Maybe because Michelle felt that what Stoney did was worse than what Stephen did. Plus, she later learned that Stephen had been allegedly abused by Stoney, so this caused Michelle to see Stephen as a victim, as a victim like Alex and like herself. So you punched him? Yes. More than once? It was basically really fast. I punched her. She actually hit me back. You know what I mean? Because I punched her so hard. You know, she reached up and she hit me back, so I slammed her on the ground. And I'm wearing like this. She looked up and she was like, I didn't mean to do that. It was like three flex. And then it's like the f part is. Stoney always had a problem with fighting. You know what I mean? So it's like I had a whole lot of feelings at once. I don't know if you understand this, but like I was actually kind of proud of her for actually hitting back. What? Because I've been fighting for them all my life, y'all. You got these kids hitting you and doing stuff to you. Ugh, disgusting you, you, you person. Back, disgusting. That, but I was actually proud of actually hitting back. If this is true, it's very surprising as most abused kids would be afraid to retaliate in this manner against someone much bigger than they are and who has control over their basic needs. It's especially surprising given that Stoney already knows her mother is capable of murdering her own child. It appears that violence was not only normalized but encouraged by Michelle. According to her own report, Stoney hitting back was the moment that Michelle smothered her. This is purely speculation, but it's possible that in a way, Michelle was relieved that Stoney fought back because that gave her an excuse to end the days of torture and just kill her. Oh my. Just, this was the day. And it just kept going. And her shirt, the black shirt. Um, oh no. I picked it up and I, I put it on her neck. She, she really fighting back, you know what I'm saying? When you say put it on her neck, what do you mean? You tied it or you held it, you choked her? I put it on her neck and first I was in front of her, but as we tussling, and we both fail, I, I'm, I'm heavier, you know, and I'm holding it, but that's still not what did it. And yes, I did tie it because... How is this real? How is this real? Before I got up, I remember I tied it. And she got up too, and of course, was backing up for me, trying to get away from me. You say... She got going, we still, we still in the room. And she but she gets up. up. After, yeah, she gets up and was backing away, and I grab the bag. Okay, you grab a bag. Mm, I just and you put it, you put the bag over her head or you just put it in her mouth. No, I held it over her. What? I had actually idea both. I didn't put it in her mouth. I held it over her her nose. At first, you know how you and then I put it over her head, and then up there like this. She expresses very little emotion about doing this to her own child. Michelle's reenactment is very useful evidence, as it's even more impactful than just words alone. Ugh. Then what? Did she stop breathing at some point? Yeah, that's that's what did. That's what I did. To her. her voice oh, was also wow. very low here, almost whispering. What do you do um, with the body? Tony's body. Freezer. freezer. On top of Steven. Huh? <clears throat> freezer on top of Steven. I didn't wrap her in anything. Again, she's whispering. This indicates that it's possible she felt more remorse about Steven's death than Stoney's. 
This is also evident in the way she directly murdered Stoney versus Stephen, who she said was not intentional. Mm. You think that after the trauma of murdering her son, of being reminded of what she did to her son every time she looked at that freezer, she'd be unable to do what she did to her daughter. Did you show them? Did you show them the body? Yeah. Not, not for a while. How long did it take before you showed She showed her other kids the bodies? What was their reaction? Just crying a lot. What? She's just crying a lot. It was looking like... He was saying he was just looking at me. And he started crying. I asked him, why are you crying? Why are you crying? He said, you're going to be in trouble. So I just told him, you know, I know I am. He told me God didn't like that. He don't like none of that stuff. That was his words. God don't like none of this stuff. It's surprising how forthcoming Michelle has been about killing her two children, as the detective has been somewhat standoffish during the interview. Yeah. The detective has leaned back away from Michelle and makes little eye contact. As she's I would also lean back and have little Michelle eye has contact. Michelle mildly frustrated at times when she feels like the detective isn't understanding what she's trying to say, but she still kept talking. Many other people would not have opened up under these circumstances. It's possible that Michelle really wanted to get everything off her chest. She may have wanted to make sure her side of the story was told, especially regarding the alleged abuse of Alex. Showing Alex the dead bodies of his siblings displays her complete disregard for her children who are still living and an inability to understand how disturbing and yeah, extremely I, traumatic I seeing think... his siblings dead and frozen would be. I it's possible she that understands Michelle wanted to show Alex that his siblings paid for she what is. she claims they did to him. On top of that, the fact that the freezer was in a main area of their home would have meant there was a constant physical reminder to the living children about what happened to their siblings. Now let me ask you That's this insanity. question. Because I know we went on to talk about all the different things that they supposed to do. They did it. But are you a stay are you a stay home mom? Yeah. Okay. So you always how, how much time do you say like how much were you? How much time do you f me up? You know? No, cause I, I want you to tell me um what? how because you you're pretty I'm always with them. Like, you're always with them. So yeah. at what point does this happen that you don't know have no idea? That's why I sat there and kept asking them, like Stephen will do this to if he says, Mom, can we go upstairs and play? We want to play with our toys and I'm like, No, sit down and watch movies with us. And be quiet and say, we want to play upstairs, y'all girls. And then come from, came from Steven. This is to get him upstairs. And then you hear a big ass, boom. He's like, what is that? That's Steven knocking him off the, the bunk bed, like straight off the top bunk bed. I didn't know what it was until after that, but it's like they're brothers. Like, they always like, y'all girls, I don't, I don't want to watch this movie or can we play? How many rooms in your house? Three. Are you sure? What do you mean? How many, how many rooms you got? Bedrooms? Yeah. Three. The detective may be trying to get her to recognize the big yes, hole in the story. See, when would her okay. older kids have had the opportunity to abuse Alex she if Michelle was always with them? She went through a lot of trauma you, herself. When, told you that. Did you ever try to see needed any help, help? Had kids, couldn't take well, care of them. Was incredibly I did. I was, I had abusive. To Not necessarily. Just the cycle why of would abuse. You have to leave them? It's awful. If you if somebody if, if somebody's doing something to your child, why would they take your child from you? Because that's brother and sister. That's brother and sister, and that's in the family. And it's like. That's brother and sister. So they would, take, they, would that. they would take the um the offender out, not the innocent party. But then you look like, how did this happen? Okay, that was all in my head. Like, I want to stay with them as long as I possibly can. I knew that they was gonna come. Do, do you feel what you did was wrong? I know it was wrong. What do you but think your punishment is wrong be? in the eyes of God? Okay. In your eyes, I'm asking you, not in the eyes of God. In your eyes, do you feel like you did what you had? Yeah, to do? you. Does that feel right? In the eyes of God, what about you? Like, do you feel like what you did was wrong? That's crazy. I didn't have to do that. She it doesn't care. Mm -hmm. She does not care that she killed her own children. I'm, look, I don't want to say yes. This woman is like not empathetic not at too. all. It's so sad that and Alex disgusting. Said she saved him shows that she may not think what she did was wrong despite understanding it's illegal. On the other hand, it's possible that she's lying that Alex told her that she saved him in order to justify what she did. By doing yeah, this, I think she she's trying to. I think she's trying to justify. Do you, let me ask it, you this. Do you think so you're crazy. Have no, because you said that throughout this interview. You because said this is what had me so scared. You told me several times that your son doesn't have a problem. He doesn't. So why would you bring that up? Nobody's accusing him of having. Because a that scares me, and how you read it back. Is oh, like, you're scared. Yes, those are my words. But just to hear it like Bro, that. Oh, I can't. This is so awful. I don't awful. want people to think. This is my biggest fear. When I'm going, people are gonna be unfair. Because y'all are thinking like, oh, he got to be crazy. Somebody's on his brother and his sister. 
He crazy. I don't, I don't want people to shun their kids away from him, for him to not have friends. Her concern about what other people will think of Alex is delusional. These concerns are also extremely minor compared to the things she had him endure by killing his siblings and showing him their bodies. Yeah, the school was quite about them stoning yeah, like and uh, attendance, you know what I mean? And basically, I just, I dropped them. And actually, I told them I was moving. So that's how I was able to drop them. I went up to the school, and I was talking to the teachers, and I actually wanted to tell. I started going into it, and some told me stop. But I was telling one of the uh, old teachers, hey, what had happened, and uh, the security guard, but I didn't tell them. Okay, I might play Valo after this video I didn't start. Think them. I just, you know, I'm dropping them. Um, you know, we need something lighthearted. Trying to see what we can do. I told them I was moving out of state with my brother. Children are not legally allowed to drop out of school until between 16 and 18, depending on the state they live. I knew Michigan, it. I mean, 18. Wendy said that he uh, is leaving after this game. Uh, I have I to help them you. out. These are the questions I asked you and the answer that you have answered. If I misquoted you or if something. I have to help Steven, them. Yeah, I get to that. They need a so, fill. That's what I thought it was, and that's why no I No one else in the I whole world here. is going to fill um, for them except for me. here that I misquoted you, let me know and we'll fix it, and I'll initial it. Okay, start reading that. I'm gonna step off for a second, I'll be right back, okay? Um, like a lot of other things, I just- oh, no, I have I'm to gonna, do gonna, my due diligence. It. I just want you to start doing this while I, um, I, want, I don't wanna give you all this. Um, we're gonna get into all the things that you, you wanna tell me about. I mean, I guess the important stuff is also, excuse me? The important stuff is also, I guess. No, it's all, it's all important. We're gonna get to it. Okay, just give me one minute, and then uh, we can continue this. Just give me one second, okay? Um, this is I'm awful because, yeah, like, I have other. Could, could they I got the keycap from HyperX, let me, let me go find out. and I need to post a photo I'm with it, and I also to have to record an interview tonight because it's due tomorrow, 9 a.m. So, yeah, like, I, I have actual I obligations that I need to do, but, like, Just, I'm trying to be a good a friend. Okay. And I need to play Valorant and fill the missing spot. Because no one else is going to play. It's like. I understand. No one else in the I'm whole come back world. Chest, okay? The officer steps out and allows Michelle to read What's over the answers. For? I can't this say. is done so that later she can't claim she misunderstood the questions, or the officer fabricated her answers and didn't write what she actually stated. Obviously, the tape can also confirm what was said. Such a good friend. Thank you. Michelle is left alone, and as she's seeing her words, she is cursing and clearly getting nervous. It seems the reality of what she's done may be setting in. It could be that she goes in and out of moments of realization about what she did and what's happening around her. Does she, she understand what's she happening her around her, though? Them. So it could be that Michelle is actively realizing here that she likely won't see her two children again. What? Like, how? I just don't understand! <laughs> It's been two years. Let me see that for one second. I'm sorry. She wants to kill. I think she was gonna end up killing her other two kids. Uh, you're here. No, Over they're time. Here. Um, they're talking to um, I think the aunt. My auntie. Yeah. When we first came, yeah, they said that my kids, and the kids, my kids aren't with her. Um, yeah, they're with me. But they're just gone. They're not, not, they're not where I could see them, I should say. Oh, but they still so we'll find out before, before we're all done, I'm going to find out exactly where they're at. Because right now they're talking to them, so it's kind of hard for me to say. But we'll find out exactly where they're at. So don't worry about it. My kids are like this, because they, they, like, seriously love me. If, if they ask you, my mom, she will, if one of them asks my mom crying, but say no. Okay. Because he was just, you know, I told him, no, I told him I wouldn't. He said, mom, don't cry. Okay. He so, said that today? Um, He's always said that, and he's telling me, you, you be, so he's telling me to be a big boy. So he said, yeah, yeah. I just really I'm hope that her kids, too. her no, I'm living right kids. Okay. <laughs> recover from the trauma Michelle that they've experienced. While the officer with is away, which is a common occurrence when suspects are left alone. Often the reality of the mother. situation sinks in only once they're left with their thoughts and begin to realize they're going to jail or they realize the gravity of their actions. I don't got a number. Okay. She's trying so hard to convince the detective her surviving kids love her. I'm sorry about that. How I mean... Feeling? So you better get off your chest? Her surviving gonna, kids had I'm to love her know. or else they would have died. So, you wanted to tell me some other stuff that was going on. Okay. Tell me, 
cool what's going on with you. That's why you gotta imagine that happening to a baby. Excuse me? Can I imagine that happening to him? I just well, try to... Let me ask you, because you're home most of the time, right? So when you're home, did you ever witness any unusual behavior between no. your kids? No. Well, well Tony, before I was even here, Stephen and Tony didn't like each other. Well, I'm thank his little brother, big sister stuff, you know? Oh, my God. She'll tell Stephen, stop, sit down. You sit down and he'll punch her, and I'm like, stop it, you know? Wow, I wonder where I they learned those I actions never... from. That's what I felt like. I Punching didn't each Steven. other. You get what I'm saying? Because when he said that to me, I'm like... He actually told you that. You're not going to say. I'm not going to save him. So let me ask you this. Um, your son came to you and gave you some complaints about some things that were going on, right? Yes. No, he didn't come to me. He didn't come to me with Stephen. He came to me with Stoney because they were sitting on the edge of my bed with like a little, like little tiff. And it didn't start out from talking uh, about Dark the, One, thanks for joining. It's like the, the little, just the little money going earlier. And then it goes, and then we went into, he talking about the diaper. And that's why I'm like, earlier you told me that you, that told you that Stephen did some things to him and you confronted Stephen and Stephen said no I didn't see when you say come to you I'm thinking you mean because I came to me told me when I walked through the door yeah but at some point he tells you yes. something that Stephen's doing to yes. him okay and you took it upon yourself to just go off of his word you never tried to get any type of um, I did I talked to Stephen we went up there and I talked to that boy okay you know I but talked to him and, and he admitted it. to have some hero he, complex he developed through a lot of shit that has happened. Her. Yeah, I almost while, yes. feel like she's also but been sexually assaulted and took out her rage and so did Stoney. She after also hearing denied. that one of her children him, did that to other, other right? children. Then you know he said, mean? okay, I did it, after you assaulted him several times. I, I yeah, think this woman is incredibly okay. broken. Well, you uh, severely assaulting him. Not just whipping him, you were severely assaulting him. It's just a very sad and depressing situation. Incredibly yes, unfortunate. Clarity here to potentially argue the fact that the children's confessions may not be accurate as they deny that they had inappropriately touched Alex until Michelle violently assaulted them into confessing. This makes their confessions much less reliable as they may have just said anything Reacting out of, out of trauma, anger. This is clearly a coerced confession. It doesn't mean it isn't true, but it's certainly unreliable. So sad. The first time you ever heard of I feel so sorry any of these complications people between that your kids experience was the first time sexual with assault Peter. I know they used to have, and uh, abuse like this little, as a kid. Sibling things but you never took like, it up on, You know how sometimes kids like to lie and make up things? Yeah. You, know, you never kind of put it to to kind of observe to see who was saying what. You just took it upon yourself. You know, or the, all the other stuff. I mean, I mean, that's kind of a serious thing you know for a kid to say hey this is what's right. going on so you just you just went basically on his word i asked him, hi soki like, have a good I workout mean, I asked Stephen also you get what i'm saying but, but he denied it but after you repeatedly assaulted him he's like oh yeah okay i did it do That's you believe right. do you believe that that i mean did you ever take your son to a trained physician no. to tell you yeah there's some signs of i'm not listening to me well i'm, I'm trying they to did that you did that they said they did that even who did that they did that to him Stoney and Steven, and I'm sitting here, and I was even talking to Stoney, and I tell her to tell <sighs> me things. It was like, oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell you that, Mom. It's like they let me, let me, let, And I'm not accusing you. I didn't just go like, but, but listen, did this, and but I listen. Michelle appears unable to recognize that Stephen may have only told her that he abused Alex because she was assaulting him. She mm. feels like she got the truth out of him. In her mind, Alex is telling the truth. She mm. already made the decision a long time ago that she believed him 100%. It would be too painful to let herself waver now because that would mean she would have to face the fact that she killed her two older children for no reason. Obviously, this is assuming that Michelle didn't just fabricate the entire abuse story in an attempt to excuse and minimize her actions. It's important to keep in mind when analyzing this case that all four of these children were likely being abused in some way for a long time. Yeah. When listening to the details of the case and watching the I feel Michelle's like something happened to those kids to that made them that this act was just a horrible this way. Incident. Something... However, in these rare instances when parents kill their own children, it's almost always the case that the parent had been abusing the children for a long so time sad. before the fatal incident. When Michelle was arrested, her two remaining children were interviewed. Both revealed to police that they were victims of physical and emotional abuse at home. Medical exams revealed that the living children had visible injuries such as a cut above the left eye of the 17-year-old and numerous scars on both children, including 25 scars you, and injuries on the 8-year-old's back. The children detailed some of the assaults they suffered at the hands of Michelle, such as being hit with a piece of wood, a hot curling iron, an extension cord, and an Alex in chat, not the Alex in the video, iron. oh my god. According to them, Michelle refused to get any of the children medical treatment when they were hurt. Both children were turned over to Child Protective Services. They did this to him every day, every night. It's like, but, but what, I, what I'm trying to think is, this was going on, like, where were you at all this time? I mean, because you're a good parent. You're always home with your kids. Right. So how, 
were these things going on for so care. long and you did not know? I mean, you got it. I mean, they're little kids. I can see if they're adults and, and it happens somewhere, but they're under your roof 24 7. I mean, they don't even go to school at some point. And there's all these things that you don't know nothing about. Did you ever, were you ever a victim of any type of. Um, yes, oh, I was. God. Okay. When I used to always, this is what got me. I talked to my kids and my auntie and everybody. So I'm talking to them like, so openly about this. And it's like, I felt like I had to. Okay. My what happened in your situation? Oh. The first time, it was a woman. Um, my mom used to leave us with any and everybody who would watch us, you know, anybody. So that, that was nothing. I think I was five, six, I don't know. But this was a woman, and she did that to me and my brother. Although we can't confirm that Michelle is telling the truth about her history of abuse, her comment about her mother is an indication that Michelle may have some sort of traumatic past that still affects her emotionally. If it's true that Michelle was abused and her abuser was a woman, then it could explain the way that she talks about Stoney, her daughter. In Michelle's mind, Stoney was the cause of everything because she supposedly abused Stephen, who then went on to abuse Alex. Since there was no confirmed abuse occurring between the siblings, it's a possibility that Michelle may have fixated on Stoney because she is female, and Michelle still feels intense oh, anger wow. towards her female abuser. That's we don't so have information sad. about Michelle's mental health profile, but there are definitely some signs pointing to the possibility of her suffering from psychosis. In a psychotic episode, a person can become paranoid, even targeting their own children. Sometimes victims of abuse repeat the cycle and become abusers themselves, especially if they never got help or support after the abuse. So let me ask you this, because you have four children. Okay. Did you have any favorites? Or what any? You mean? Did you prefer one more than the other? Or did you love them all the same? In your that's opinion. What, that's, I love them all the same, because all of them had different personalities. It's just... Those are my kids. I'm just asking, because some people say, oh, this is my favorite, because he's the youngest, or he's my favorite, he's the oldest. But as far as you go, you love them all the same. Yeah. There was you didn't prefer one over the other. What do you mean prefer? Like like one was closest to you, you know. You know, you, you always got the one that's kinda of distant because maybe they want to be with their dad or maybe they look like their dad or for some reason they're just distant. And then you're not gonna lie, I've typed out to Wendy. I don't think I can make it to Valo because I have some homework to do and I've deleted it three times because I want to play Valo, but I have to. I have stuff I have to do. I have to record this interview questionnaire thing tonight and I have to post the HyperX keycap thing. But how is it already? 7 p.m. Oh God, what do I do? I've typed it three times and deleted it. Let's see, how far is their game? Okay, there. Yeah, I have her stream open because I'm literally checking. They're six and two right now. Okay, okay. Here. All right, hold on. Be strong, Ray. I can't! All right, here, let me, let me see if I can just, you know, do some homework right now. Let me open the key, the key cap thing. Alright, oops. Alright, so this is from HyperX. Do it now. <laughs> oh god. Okay, we finished this video first. But like, look, it came in this really cute box. I, I'm supposed to, I have to do a sponsored tweet. And I need to take a photo, but like, I can't do the interview thing on stream. That has to happen after. It's called Cozy Cat Coco, your perfect gaming companion. Okay, I want to open it now. <laughs> oh my gosh! Limited edition, HyperX. Cozy Cat keycap. Here, I'm gonna open. Maybe I could just put it on my keyboard and take a photo of it. There. Open, open, open. Open, open. Oh! It's not food, Mika. Here, you can smell. I smell? Here, let me show you guys up close. Mm -mm -mm. Oop. This is it. Up and up, what? Focus. A little cap, and then. On the back, it says Coco. That's a little a scarf and it's so cute. It's 
so cute. Oh my god, I am messed up. Messed up from crying earlier. Isn't it cute? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a keycap that goes on your keyboard. And I need to here, let me Alright, let's if I ah! Sorry, I, I pressed the button. Oh, okay. Sorry. Alright, maybe if I just put it on here and then I take a photo of the Oh my god. Okay. Crying. Oh, I was tearing up from the... Okay, if I... It's on! Alright. I have it on. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick photo of it. No, no, happy tears. I'm, I'm happy tears. Oh, okay, um, let me look at the... Yeah, let me just do this real quick. Some homework. Alright. Um, uh, tweet Coco the cozy cat key cap is now live for the next 48 hours at hyperx.gg slash cozy cat cap with a picture of you holding holding the key cap here I'll I'll take a fiddle a, 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 a picture of it on the keyboard and then a picture of me holding it <laughs> streamer has homework I got duties to fulfill if I do this now I could play some Valorant surely Ooh. Remove this. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I have to make the background look pretty. Okay. Okay, I gotta clean the keyboard a little bit. It's looking a little crusty. <laughs> Let me cook! bit of dust in there just a little bit a little bit of dust okay all right okay let me cook okay let's see do you want it to be red maybe what's this button do oh this is the brightness oh okay okay turn down the brightness there let me cook okay i really should just be doing this after after stream, but here we are. Okay, focus. Oh, okay, oops. I recorded on accident. Delete that one. Okay, that's a cute photo. All right, look at this. Is it blurry? Okay, I'll, I'll post it anyways. All right. I will use that photo. Looks really cute with the blue light. Okay, delete this one. Cute. Okay. Now I have to, can't see anything, I know. <laughs> okay. All right, let's finish this video first. Oh, that one that's close to always wants to be. Oh, 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 I can't hear anything. So we did, that's why I don't understand. You like to spend a lot of time together. How did you kind of oh, I shouldn't dodge my responsibilities. And, and, me, and, and you. Just like, just like the rest of the kids. Okay, you know, I, gotta all, I gotta tell her. Yeah, it's a little different because you started to, I think, you know, I gotta tell them. Her. You know what I mean? And they change right. it. They start changing, they start getting a little attitude. Yeah. You know, attitude is just, period, changing. You're like, okay, well, you know how you just. And that's what I'm asking. Did you, did, you, did you have. Maybe they, you know, maybe they were disobedient more than the others. So you like these guys more Actually, than the other guys. Kids. They were all good kids. That's why I can't lie. That's why everybody. So is there any them. other reason other than um, what they told you that made you do what you did? That's it. So if he would have never told you these things, Stoney and Steven would still be here today? Because they had no. Okay. He didn't, it's not, he just told me. How do you discipline That's your true. child? How do you discipline your children? My good. I have a problem with that too. What do you mean by not good? Yeah, it's no, we'll play Valor right. tomorrow. No, I you, should, I need to do the interview child, thing. You whoop your children? Ugh, I should, yes. ugh. To the point of abuse? Yes. It's okay. All of them? Yes. So you, you pick that way as well? Yes, and it's, I can't explain it. This shows that the tragic ending of her children's lives was the likely culmination of years of abuse. 
Abusive parents who end up seriously injuring or murdering their children will often engage in emotional, verbal, and physical abuse long before the final tragic incident. Michelle seems to understand logically that her behavior is wrong, yet she may be unable to control her anger. She appears to be suffering from significant issues relating to her own childhood trauma. Most people with trauma backgrounds do not kill other people. But of those individuals who kill another person, most of them do have a history of trauma in their own childhood. While her crimes against her children are horrific, her profile doesn't necessarily fit with that of a psychopath, and her behaviors are conflicting. On one hand, she's accepting responsibility for what she did mm -hmm. and appears to be truthful during the interview, mm -hmm. while on the other hand, she demonstrates a long history of deceitfulness and lying, which are psychopathic traits, as she kept the murders of her two children a secret for years. At times, she exhibited impulsive behavior and extreme aggressiveness. While she did admit that what she did was evil and wrong, she didn't express remorse or regret for the suffering she caused Stephen and Stoney. Have you killed anyone else? No. What type of discipline do you think you should get? Well, my kids. What? If you could do it all over again. That wasn't the question. I'll say yes. The only reason I'll say yes is because I would get to stay with them. When you say them, do you mean all of them or just? No, because regardless how I was thinking, if that happened. What? You mean the same situation happened? Mm -hmm. Would I make the same choice? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I don't want to stay. You know? But you don't really care about those choice. two. No, I do. I would have made a different choice. What, what, what choice would you have made? I tried to go somewhere. I said. He's never said that to me before. So for him to say that, was like, say that to you? Um, she thinks her. After it happened. She thinks abusing Alex her that she saved him seems to be enough peace of mind for Michelle. Yeah. Almost like she's satisfied what the? with what she, she did thinks abusing she was them was okay. Her son from suffering continued abuse. If I brought me in here, right? She thinks it's I justified entirely. Pretty much the same question I'm asking you. She doesn't regret it at all. That's, that took place. Ask him. You don't even have to have him in front of me. Ask. Him. Is he gonna tell me the same thing you're telling me? He has to. You just you gotta listen to him. Ever lie to you? Yes. About what? Little things. Like what? He'll lie and then okay, I'll be going to something else. I think was, you know, in the lie, I don't like that. Thanks, Ma. But he does that. Yeah. Every, and you all, don't like it? No. So that's like the only reason I ever would. You know, Do you know I the difference between problem, a lie and the know. truth? Yes, definitely. You mean does he know the difference? No, I'm asking you. Do you know yes. the difference between a lie and the truth? Yes. Okay. So, and you're familiar with, like, a white lie versus... There's no such thing. Okay, a lie is a lie. Yeah. Okay. And are you familiar with um, the difference between um, a chronic liar or somebody that... Habitual. A habitual liar. Yeah. Are you familiar with somebody that habitually lies or somebody that lies, for example, if I say, hey, do you like this dress on me? And, I'm, and you're like, no, but you don't want to make me feel bad. So you're like, oh, that's nice, but you're really lying because it looks terrible. Right. Right? You're familiar with the difference. That's so you like, won't hurt, yeah, somebody like, like feelings, a, but... Like a small lie versus somebody that lies all the what time. The yeah. heck? Are you familiar with that? Yes. In your opinion, how would you categorize your son? None of those. None of those? He never lies? No, he does, he but does. I wouldn't... Excuse me. Like, just little things. The officer is getting it on record that Michelle knows right from wrong, mm -hmm. and a white lie from a lie. This again mm -hmm. will make it harder for her to make an insanity defense. <laughs> she doesn't Blair, seem insane. What, what's on your mind? Seems like she knows exactly what she did. She just has an, in, an incredible amount of trauma. Even though I did out of know, anger like, and emotion what and do matter. That shit was happening all that time. Traumatic and know, experience. I'm, sorry, and I'm, I'm like, like no matter what, they can kill me, and, and that's the part. This is what I do know. And I'm already told the kids, oh, God, now you know, it doesn't matter. But I won't like. I think gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Built up trauma. Yeah. Do you consider she's yourself so sweet? You consider yourself a tough mom? I mean, you're tough, right? You're gonna it's over it's over the. Okay. This looks like tough, but not. No matter how it makes bad behavior, care. it's definitely not okay. But she definitely needed to like heal from her traumatic experiences. Like this, I used to be like a kid. You know what I mean? I 
to tell my daughter all the time, I was just like you. Like how she is, she constantly, she quiet, she's messing with herself. Okay, it's like, so let them talk. Mm-hmm. I'm the one like, that. they mess with you, I'm, you know, I think I'll the ass. Don't mess with them. It's like, yeah, it doesn't excuse it, but it does explain I was like it. That and it's gone. It's nobody's fault, it's gone. But I was like that, and I don't want them to. I mean, I just know I told my mom. She said, what the f- do you want me to do about it? It's she should have just not have kids. This means that it's likely that Macho's mother never validated her, her children feelings about the trauma she experienced. Not which makes the emotional damage even worse. Been intentional. It's like trauma on top of trauma when a parent doesn't validate the child's feelings, even if it's been decades since the abuse occurred. Michelle was likely never able to process her emotional pain, and it's very likely that this led to her maladaptive behaviors in adulthood, such as her uncontrolled anger, inability to control her emotions, and abusive parenting that turned fatal. Michelle likely sees herself as a better mother than her own because she did something when Alex told her he was being abused. It's important to keep in mind that many adults struggle with histories of childhood abuse. This doesn't mean that if they relive the trauma somehow as adults that they will murder anyone like Michelle For did. them? I don't know. That's all I know. But... <laughs> I told them, you get older. I don't know. Anybody. Girls, Maybe she anybody, wanted kids. Maybe it was, like I don't know. I don't know. Do you see what I did for you? That's not not. But like having kids doesn't just get out, rid of your trauma. Out. Once you finish reading, I'm going to find out where they're at. And that way you can, you know, feel secure that they're in good hands, okay? Okay, but I need you to look at that statement to make sure that everything's accurate. Okay? And then we'll go from there. I already know. Oh, that's not like, you know, I know what's up. No, I nobody myself. Ms. The normal part of me, I can see myself talking right now. I can't. You're not literally, but if that was, if, if that was me, I, w- I totally understand what it looks like, and I've been. Ms. Blair, nobody, 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 nobody judging you here. Okay, something happened, and you felt you yes, did what you had to do. Yes, for them, the discrepancy of sexual education and use. No matter the US what, is or I think, I hope. I mean, don't take that. Then get older and go crazy. It's with not it. easy so to I just, want just, to, just not, get an abortion. No hurt people. He told me it's expensive to, going to the doctors. Like the, the whole guy, process is a lot. I'm going to hell. Period. That's what happens. You know. Sometimes you can't lie. You can't. You can't fight with people. If people call you stupid. If people call you this. It's like I'm trying to cover bases with them. You just better go because you know you was important. As <laughs> you important. It's like something like that happens. It's like you don't have to feel like he was crushed. It's like nobody's gonna give a about him. Mattel signs the notes taken by the officer swearing that they're accurate. This is less necessary than it was years ago since almost all mm. interrogations are videotaped. Yeah. But it's done here to avoid retractions or allegations that the officer lied or misconstrued the suspect's words in her notes. Can you give me one second, okay? Following the interrogation, Mattel was charged with two counts of first-degree murder. An examination of the bodies revealed that nine-year-old Stephen died from blunt force trauma and what was described as thermal injuries in 2012. That is so While 13 sad. While 13-year-old Stoney was killed in 2013 from blunt trauma to the head. Michelle kept both of the bodies in the deep freezer in the family's living room for around three years until their discovery when she was evicted. When she went to trial, Michelle told the judge that she still felt no remorse and even doubled down by stating that she would have killed Stephen and Stoney again, referring to them as demons. Still, prosecution made it clear that they didn't find any evidence that Alex had been assaulted by his siblings. In fact, there's no evidence that the alleged victim or his older sister ever corroborated the story Michelle told investigators. While she was in prison during her trial, one of the other prisoners who had been housed in the same block as Michelle came forward with a shocking claim. They alleged that, among other things, Michelle told them that she'd made up the entire story that her son had been assaulted by his siblings so that people will have sympathy for her. This person also stated that Michelle told them that she threatened her oldest daughter into helping with the deaths of her siblings. According to court documents, it was reported that her eldest daughter alleged Michelle forced her to carry Stoney's body and put it in the freezer. Neither of these claims have ever been proven, nor was anyone besides Michelle charged with any crimes connected to this case. In less than four months, Michelle was charged, convicted, and sentenced. In June of 2015, Michelle pled guilty and said she would have accepted the death penalty if it had been an option in Michigan. Instead, she was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. This leaves the question of what happened to Michelle's remaining two children after her arrest. Well, in 2017, it was reported in the news that her oldest, then 19, was graduating high school and had plans to go to college, while her youngest son had been adopted and was thriving in school. Though the case seems like it ends here, it doesn't quite. Since her incarceration, Michelle has continued to find herself in trouble with the authorities. In fact, it's been reported that she's been involved in 49 incidents since she was imprisoned. In one confrontation, Michelle allegedly put her urine and feces into a Pringles can and threw it in the face of a corrections officer. On another occasion, while Michelle was being escorted down a hallway, 
She started yelling at another prisoner. When a correction officer intervened, the child punched Who them gave in the her Pringles? Arm. She was sentenced on charges for both incidents and added 38 months to five years to her sentence. <laughs> I, t I how how can you save them at that point? All right, chat. I I told Wendy I can't play Valo because I am dodging my responsibilities and I'm going to go for Phil. My duties and do my responsibilities. I'm going to take my picture with the keycap, post it tomorrow, and then I'm going to record my interview thing for a thing that I can't talk about. My questionnaire thing that I need to film. So I'm going to go do my stuff. But tomorrow we'll be playing Valorant with Timmy and uh, whoever. So that'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm ready to game. You know, this was a left crime for me. I I feel like that was a pretty awful video. That was a pretty awful situation. I don't think I've seen one that bad. That was awful. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyways, thank you for hanging out. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Goodbye.